All right, YouTube family, it's your boy Superman 2000 in the fight here. Got a lot going on. Let me get my blanket. I'm, I'm, I'm a little cold today. Got a lot going on. So, I got some house cleaning to do, all right? Let me walk you through. I prepare for our, my videos by reading articles, making notes, and then doing my analysis based on my background, where I'm coming from as a fan, how I feel about it, and then the other side of the equation, then I put it all together. So recently, I did some analysis, same deal as usual, but one thing that happened was when the UFC was lobbying to get MMA legal in New York City, one of the things that I put in my notes is that it would be great if UFC 200 would be in New York City. And I heard, and I heard that briefly mentioned somewhere in an interview with Dana White. That, that, that could be a possibility, but they have to see how that pan out. So that was in my notes, and then I copied that over several times into my other notes. Then I'm under the impression that UFC 200 is going to be in Madison Square Garden, which it's not. So the housekeeping item is actually going to be at the in Las Vegas, at the, 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 the T-Mobile Center. So that's a correction. If any of my other videos me mentioned Madison Square Gardens, in my notes, I was thinking because UFC spent all that money and time lobbying, and campaigning to get the the New York market open, it would be historic to have the UFC 200, which is historic, at the Madison Square Garden. So they have two historic um, benchmarks, one for the organization and then one for the city. So here I am thinking now, so, 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 so the housekeeping item is that it's not there. You know, you, you people, guys watching this video probably already knew that. And I thank you for bearing with me on that. I'm, hey, I'm, I only get better as I go along. I'm learning. So that's the housekeeping item. A fellow YouTube user, I forgot his name, but I probably put it across the video once I editor at the bottom of the comments. I thank him for keeping me honest. Thank you for going back and fact checking the video and then getting that for me. So now, I guess the question that brings, the, uh, and, and that's what, so, so my problem now is that if that's not the case, where it's in New York, in a in, in a, a prime place where the population density is there, the means of transportation, you hop on the C train or the D train or the A train, whatever, to get you at Madison Square Garden. I don't know what train goes there, so let's do a little bit to that either. So you hop on whatever train to get to Madison Square Garden from wherever, wherever you are in New York City. I've been to New York. Their transportation system will get you, bam, where you want to go anytime. With a Population density like that, and good people with lots of high disposable income. Why not put UFC 200 in New York? I mean, why still Las Vegas? Because you already seen what the gate was like with John Jones. Okay? The first time, you got to put him in the ring with Kamir, and then the gate's going to be sucky. Now, I think the UFC 198 card would have done better. But the UFC 200 card, I'm, I'm looking over it, and I, I don't think it's that strong. So this is a housekeeping item. I wanted to, to, to clarify that. And then the next issue, you know, I've been checking Twitter very often the past couple of days. I haven't gotten any feedback from, no feedback from Conor McGregor. He's just gone just like that. No feedback, no nothing. So... You know, a fellow YouTube user, Cannabis Heels, very brilliant guy, brilliant mind at breaking down facts and giving additional insight I didn't even see. And I, 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 and we, we, he came to the conclusion and I came to the conclusion separately, but we both, but when he said it, it made sense to me, then I was like, you know, he's right. Those two pieces, I, I didn't connect those dots together, so he helped me connect those dots. And one of the things I realized that, hey, the UFC, me, I said, Connor, we pulled you from the New York fight card. And you get, you're also getting pulled from UFC 200. And we're going to keep pulling from every other card. You're on a contract with us. So if you keep pulling you from cards and you don't get to fight, you'll be locked up because you're not meeting your contractual obligations. Fine. But I think Dana White also say, and one more thing. If you go out on Twitter and say anything, we're going to not, we're going to pull you again. We need, we need proof that you're in step with us and in line with us. So you shut your mouth, you won't say anything to anybody, you won't tweet anything about what's going on. 
Because last time you tweeted that you were you were on the card. And we didn't want you on the card. But I believe Dana White, and I, I, I told him that he was on the card. And he tweeted, hey, I'm, I'm back on the card. He just wouldn't randomly tweet, I'm on the card for no, no reason. He's not crazy. He, he, he's, a, he's a lot of things, but he's not crazy. You understand? So now, the UFC wants to control everything in terms of what information is being disseminated. Dana White spoke with TMZ. TMZ is coming and saying Connor was lying. We don't know that Connor is lying. Okay? Dana White saying, uh, uh, Nate Diaz, he isn't mad. He isn't upset at all. You know, he's not upset at all. Well, Nate Diaz hasn't told us he's not upset at all. I said, hey, I'm going on vacation. You see what I'm saying? Everything that we're hearing about the fight and the fighter status is all coming from UFC. Dana White saying, oh, oh, no, no. Connor and I, we have a good relationship. We don't know that. We don't know if Connor is pissed. We don't know if Connor, if, if Connor even want to talk to him. We don't know that. You understand? And this happened before where the UFC has done that. It's the same with Jose, when Jose Aldo had a broken rib. The UFC came out and said one thing. Was it but they got that resolved later on. And I'm thinking it's the same deal. I, I, Dana White, it's just like him saying, uh, we don't tell people why the UFC, how much how much money the fighters in the UFC make because they don't want, fighters don't want that information out. They don't want nobody to know how much they make. That's why we never tell people how much they make. We don't make that information public. Really? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. So, you know, I, 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 I as the organization taking a stand and say, no, we're not going to put Conor McGregor on the card because... He didn't want to come to the press conference or we put him back on the card, but then we realized we'd take him off because he's out of control. And we, we, we want to control him. We want to force him to get in line with everybody else. We want to turn him into a, a good little whipping boy. So he'll, we'll say jump and he'll say, oh, hi. And that's why we're taking these steps. If you say that, hey, I'm cool, but don't lie on the guy and try to destroy his reputation and say that he, he, he tweeted out something that's not, that's not, you know? And the fact that there's no more tweets from Conor McGregor is very suspicious to me. Okay, so I think that UFC is controlling, is doing a good PR campaign of controlling this. They have other fighters talking and doing interviews that oh, the UFC is very reasonable. The promotion events isn't bad. You know, so it's kind of, it's kind of like everybody is, is is doing a a, a a snow job, cover things up nice and smooth. Now, Conor McGregor, ah, uh, card, he's not on the card. Fine. By the same time, I don't feel sorry for Conor McGregor. The man took a stand that he feel he had to take. And he was willing, he's man enough to deal with the consequences. And think about this. He's a very entrepreneurial guy. And he has $14 million. He can go out and start a plumbing company tomorrow. McGregor's plumbing. And people all of Ireland would bring business to him. He can open a gym tomorrow with his coach. A set of gyms throughout his country for training, and people will flock to it. So he has he, he still have a lot of opportunity and venues ahead of him that he can road that he can take. Now how him and the UFC resolve this issue, I guess is the outcome that is going to be dependent on whether or not Dana White just decide, hey, you know, we we can we can work this out, or whether Conor McGregor decide, hey, you know, I I'm willing to change my approach. I'm willing to do things differently. I mean, as a fan, they can sort that out. But what really concerned me was that they were so wrapped up in UFC 200 that they forgot to effectively market 197 and 198. Now, the card for 198 is amazing. Oh, my goodness. Ah! That's an amazing card. I, I got my fight picks lined up. I'm doing my articles coming out on that. I got, that card is amazing. That's an amazing card. I love it. That's a strong card. That's going to well in Brazil. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. So I just had to get a bit of house cleaning out about MGM. And I'm just kind of wondering why the UFC is not you know, moving into the New York market as quickly as they should. And the time that that's done, that they have moved into the New York market, Bellator may go in first, or maybe they're waiting to see if somebody else goes in first with MMA, how it will do, and then based on that, they'll get feedback, or maybe some legal issues that they have to address first, you know, 
bill passed, the bill has to trickle down to blah, blah, blah. Guidelines have to be established, that type of stuff, before they can go ahead. So maybe the, the, the legal stuff on the back end is working itself out. So we'll see. But otherwise, I'm still in the fight chair. Got some more videos coming up, guys. Thanks for watching. And peace out from the fight chair. Uh, Connor, get back to me. I tweeted you. Get back to me.